Fans of the Horus Heresy, thank you very much for joining me for an unboxing video of something rather new and rather unusual. And this is a four-drawed kit, and it is the Sisters of Silence Caron Pattern Acquisitor. So this was featured in Book 7. So this is a general purpose transport and infantry fighting vehicle for the Sisters of Silence from the Talons of the Emperor list for the Horus Heresy game. So I picked this up today and we're going to have some fun unboxing it. What we're going to do in this review is we're going to open it up, we're going to take the parts out of the box and just generally see what it's like, check the kit for quality. Now, I'm going to do a little bit of a special tribute opening of the cellophane on this review. And this is kind of like just as a, a tribute to fella Horus Heresy fanatic Super Saiyan. And he's recently gone past 15,000 subscribers and he's running a giveaway at the moment. So I'll leave a link to his channel. Please do check it out. So Super Saiyan is well known for opening boxes with a variety of bladed devices. And here's my little tribute to that. This one's for you, Super Saiyan. I'll have to draw it first. And let's go in with a bit of the cold steel. one and we'll give it the other side as well and go on, let's let's give it a slash across the top I think that'll do the trick that's one for you and congratulations on reaching 15,000 subscribers what an awesome achievement mate so let's remove the remains of the much sliced cellophane. Have a look at this. So this is a full resin kit from Forgeall. The current price is £85. So a reference point would be in the custodian range. It's the same cost as the Caladius Grav Tanks. Let's have a look. It feels quite a heavy box. So I'm quite intrigued as to what's inside. Bob that over there. Now this is a vehicle by one of my favourite Forgeall designers, Stuart Williamson. And He's done all sorts of vehicles for the Heresy range, loads and loads of different stuff, like things like Sakaar and tanks, the Marine Super Heavies like the Glaive. He's done all the Mechanicum stuff, and now he's done the Caron Pattern Acquisitor. So we have a bag of bits, a big bag of bits. We have, whoa, what I would describe as being one of the chunkiest main hull sections I've ever encountered in resin and certainly in the Horus Heresy range. We then have a nice CAD instruction manual and we have a packing sheet and this was packed on the 26th of the 6th of 26th of June. So it's about a month ago by SB. So hopefully all the parts are here and SB, whoever they may be, was on the ball that day. Right, so let's have a quick look at the instructions. For those people who like the fluff, there's a little bit of fluff that you can pause and read. I'll talk about the nomenclature and origin of the name of this, because um, as is often the case with Alan Bly writing, there's some excellent symbolism in the name here. And here it is, and this is unlike any Imperial vehicle or indeed any 40K vehicle that has come before it or since. And for that, I absolutely love it. Right, so we get the usual parts inventory, an exploded diagram of a model. And then we have an assembly guide. This to me looks like a pretty straightforward build. Essentially you've got a real, this big block, this main hull, and then a load of parts that are going to slap onto it. So I'm hoping there's not much really to do. What's really fascinating about this model is you get alternative noses. So you get kind of like this closed up nose, which you might call the cruise mode. And then you get this open nose like that which you might call the suck up unsuspecting psychers mode or shy halud mode, if you know the Dune universe. And it's been designed with magnet fits so you can swap between the two. So intriguing design. Right, let's have a look at the parts and see what we've got. So talking of that big chunky main hull, let's have a look at this. So Iron Maidens perhaps, and I think this design is no accident. Anyone who's bought any of the custodian grav vehicles will recognize this sort of design of grav plate, shall we say. Yeah, this looks nice. Good design of the mold here. So what you might be able to see is the mold seam has been put right down the edge of this armor plate and that's really good design that that's what you want because any slight offsets you get or even quite major offsets, they get hidden by the armor line and they're much easier to fix in places like that. So that's great to see. There's a few shims to remove as you might expect and a whopping great key. Yeah, it's a big one that. 
to put it mildly. We've got some interior detail. We've got some air vents, so we'll just need cutting out carefully with a sharp scalpel. Those will look great when they're done. And some nice interior detailing of perhaps the engine cove, or the engine uh, covering. Yeah. So, very nicely cast. That looks spot on, that. Very nice. And gosh, what a chunky piece. I mean, that's that's chunkier than some of the chunky bits on the Warlord. Right, let's have a look in the bag. It looks like we have a bag within a bag. Do you like the little Dune reference there? So we have, oh, two bags within a bag. So we have bag one, and we have uh, bag two, and then we have the bigger bits. So let's start by looking at the bigger bits first. That's a technical phrase, if you're wondering. Right, so what we got, we've got, let's do this bit first. So this is like the tail assembly, we might say, or I'm not sure if that's a correct, whoops. I'm not sure if that's a correct term to use for describing the Caron, but this is going to go at the back here, like so. One thing I like about this model is this is in effect quite often on, well, not quite often, most of the time on 40K vehicles, Everything has got proud, upstanding rivets. This thing is flush riveted, as you can see. Lovely touch and a great alignment between the model design and the actual rules for this. And it's, okay, it's not mega stealthy, but it's supposed to be giving an indication it's stealthier. And this is quite a sneaky stealthy vehicle. So I like the flush riveting. If you've ever seen a rocket from the, say, 60s or 50s or a military aircraft, flush riveting was a big thing in terms of aerodynamics back then. If you've ever been to the um, Leicester Space Centre in the UK and seen the Thor rocket, and all you guys and girls who are stateside, you, uh, you clearly you've got some far more impressive rockets you can go look at, but I'm sure there's lots of great examples of flush riveting to see there as well. Right, so let us have a look at the closed nose. So these are weapon assemblers, which can like mixed auto cannon missile batteries. We've got a beautiful stencil, almost like negative stencil effect, Imperial Eagle with this all-seeing eye and of course that is uh, nothing to do with Horus but everything to do with Sisters of Silence. This all looks beautifully cast. So saving weight there, I mean I guess if that was a solid lump it might well be going thunk. Very good. Doesn't really matter what it looks like behind here, that can all be cleaned up, it's just a flat surface and it's going to mate onto that so look at the, I just love the design here and you can imagine what is what the sculptor thought is this kind of like rolls back and much like Dune, the Guild Navigator's tank, I think has influenced, much like the film Dune, should I say, the Guild Navigator's tank has influenced that. Well, certainly in my view, who knows where he got the idea from. Right, so same part, but this time in suck up psycho mode, we have this iris-like door, very reminiscent of the film Alien. If you've seen that classic of science fiction, if you haven't, please watch it. And that really reminds me of that. Yeah, and the rear side again. I mean, this, bits like this don't matter. They can just be filled and made level. Doesn't matter when it's out of sight like that and it won't affect the fit, I don't think. Part like this, it's a nice big flat piece that you can easily sand to get flat with any imperfections. Excellent, right, let's go on to the medium size bag or medium part size bag, you might say. Right, now this is kind of an exciting piece. So this is like the Ooh, cockpit, command position. Some might even say conning tower. Yeah, lots more flush riveting. Yeah, this looks great. Little air bubble there, easy peasy to sort out. Is that another air bubble there? Uh, no, don't think so, that's a flush rivet, isn't it? Yes, that's just the last rivet. That's going to mate like that onto there. Let's just get a look at the detail on this. That, uh, yeah, I like that. A great look. And if you've ever um, read anything about early military submarines and and the like, and certainly the sort of things that came between the American Civil War and the First World War, I can see some real design influences on this, and in a good way as well. Lovely. We've got a kind of balancey base. So this is similar to uh, what I got on the Cronus Grav Carrier, and I think it's the same as other custodian type Grav vehicle bases. So I'm guessing there's gonna be a clear resin post for this to go on. This looks like a pizza spinning on someone's finger. Uh, that'll be easy to heat up and flatten out. So the warping there doesn't matter. We've got two 
We've got two kind of runners. I'm not sure whether these are going to run. I don't know if these are going to go along the hull somewhere. Oh, I think these are going to attach here. Yeah. So these are kind of like details. So let's get a look at these. Yep. A little bit of seam to clean up there. No big drama. Yeah, likewise there. Splendid. And that just leaves the bag of detail parts. There's some quite interesting and exciting pieces in here. So, oh gosh, what got? We've got all sorts of weird and wonderful. What should we do? Should I do some engines first? Yes, let's do some engines. So here we have an engine. So this is going to clamp onto the rear. So you've got this here. This engine is going to attach. I can see there's some nice design features with the location of parts on this kit. And I'm, I'm sure I'm going to talk about that later when I get into the review of this in more detail. I'm seeing things that make me think of what I've previously said to be a really good recent kit design from Forge World, which is a Cracknos assault tank for the Mechanicum. Love the detail on this. Stealthy engine design with all these baffles and fins, perhaps. So look, uh, the smallest of offsets there. That's small enough to be easy to clean up, so uh, no worries there and the second engine so same design just the opposite side of a vehicle whoops sorry camera the offset here has got a bit bigger let's compare the two a bit more than i would have liked there but given that these are going to i mean that will clean up that you know it's not so big as to not be recoverable and also bear in mind that these are going to go like there. So the actual side with the offset is actually on the bottom side. So that's actually, I don't know if that's deliberate mold design, but if it is, it's clever because once it's cleaned up, it'll then be hidden out of view. So that's fine. And I mean really hidden out of view. You simply won't be able to look at it. Right, we've got the little resin transparent post and that is going to bob on to there like so. And then that'll go into the underside of the Caron, which is this point here. So like that, and then it'll hover along and uh, terrify everybody on the battlefield. What should we have now? Should we do some petals or, or let's do some, hmm, well, let's do this random bit. I don't know what this is. This is, looks like part of the hull somewhere. Yep, yeah. fine, excellent, very nice. Let's do the weapons. So these parts now that we're going to look at are for when the nose of the Charon is in the open suck up enemy mode or shy halud mode. And if I recall correctly, these weapons are a combination missile launcher and auto cannon array. So quite neat weapons and they've got some groovy capabilities. A little bit of offset to correct there, but that's okay. Not much really given. Quite fixable. That looks good. And then the second one is just here. Yeah. Nice detailing. I think this is all, I think there's a great design sort of theme running through this and continuity of look. So I'm, I'm quite excited by this. And there just for, to understand what's going on, they can see the shrouded and unshrouded visualization of the weapon array. Very nice indeed. And I do like, I really like the sort of cluster of weapon barrels around there. That looks great, I think. And it's been cast very nicely. So yeah, excellent stuff. Right, now we've just got the petals to do. So petal one. So this is the like the upper petal. Or you could even call it the upper beak, perhaps. A little nick there just to sand out, that's fine. A couple of seams. Same lovely Imperial Eagle with the eye, the watchful eye of the Sisters of Silence. Splendid. We've got another part of the petal. Uh, I've no idea where that goes. Is that another petal part? No, I don't think that is a petal part. I think this goes somewhere else. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, okay, this is actually rear end. This is some sort of engine thing. That's gonna go there. Right, so nothing to do with the nose. Bit of an adventure for me, this. That's nicer cast. No issues at all. Now we're onto the petal pieces, finally. So done one. There's this first, so these are kind of like the side pieces. So these are going to go down here, like so. Yeah, 
Yep, spot on, lovely stuff. And then the second of the two petals, or the lower petals, let's have a look at this. Little air bubble, another little air bubble to fill. Easy peasy, no issues there. That looks great, very good. And then, oh, there is one part left. And, ooh, this is some sort of grill. I wonder where that goes. Hmm. Shall I have a quick um, dive into the instructions to find out where the mystery grill goes? I know that's not some sort of barbecue for inquisitors. Uh, so it says five, so it's gonna go around the back somewhere. Oh, okay, right, there we go. So it's actually an engine cover, or what they call the vent guard. Hmm. That does raise a question. What gets vented out of the vent guard? Hmm. Maybe it's a cries of heresy from the unfortunate psychers that this is hoovered up. There's some very thin shims in effect to take out of that. Just a job for a nice, sharp craft knife or scalpel. And that's your lot. So there you have it. Um, an unboxing review of the latest four-drilled model for the Horus Heresy, the Sisters of Silence Caron Patton Acquisitor. Fascinating looking model. I'm very excited about this. I'm going to get this built over the weekend. So do watch out for some more content around this. As I said at the start of the video, check out Super Saiyan's channel and congratulations again on hitting 15,000 subs, or although I think you're getting close to 16K now. But yes, please let me know what you think of this most unusual of vehicles. Are you a Sisters of Silence fan? Have you been waiting for this? I know I'm going to put a contingent of sisters into my Talons of the Emperor detachment, and yeah, this is a great addition. Other than that, I'd just like to say thank you very much for watching. I'll speak to you next time, and goodbye.